so that you'll be kind enough. Thank you. Thanks for being here this afternoon. As we sit here today, there are tens of thousands of NATO men and women deployed across three continents, fighting and working together day and night to fulfill the missions that our alliance has taken on. I'm extremely proud of them and am continually inspired by their professionalism, their sacrifice, and their resolve to accomplish the important operations we've asked them to undertake. I'll start first with ISAF. I've recently visited NATO troops there, and I can tell you the situation is encouraging. Our main effort has shifted to training, advising, and assisting Afghan security forces, and our long-term strategy is beginning to pay off. The counterinsurgency fight remains difficult, but the Afghan forces are now fully in the lead, and they have held their ground. More specifically, during this fighting season, they have proven they are capable of planning and conducting large integrated operations. The NSF has also gathered momentum, recruiting, training, and outfitting their security forces, all the while making good strides towards establishing sustainable security for the long-term stability of their country. During my visit, I was fortunate to watch the first ever all-female class of police cadets graduate from their training. It's inspiring to see these women who are boldly and confidently taking on the many challenges that they know they will face. Appropriately, this well-respected security force will provide the security for their countrymen and women who will vote for the future of Afghanistan in the upcoming national elections this spring. Next, I'll highlight K4, where we have nearly 5,000 NATO troops still steadfastly providing a supporting security presence, helping to underpin the exceptional political progress we have all seen. These men and women can, can take great pride in knowing they are playing a part in the historical developments there, including the ongoing talks with the European Union and the recent elections in northern Kosovo. Next, Ocean Shield, off the coast of Somalia, is helping keep piracy at historic lows. NATO's efforts in the Gulf of Aden, together with our international partners and collaboration with the commercial shipping community, have led to a significant drop in piracy in the region. And in the Mediterranean, NATO ships taking part in Operation Active Endeavor are continuing to deter terrorism. NATO's vigilance is making a difference. Finally, I'll highlight NATO's continued support to Turkey, where Patriot missile batteries from three allied nations are helping to protect millions there from a ballistic missile threat from Syria. As SACUR, I'm well aware, as ISAF draws down over the next 11 months, that NATO's operational tempo is likely going to be lower than it has in the last decade. Yet, as you know, the world remains unstable in many regions, and we must remain prepared to respond, either to conflict or in response to other missions, as determined by the North Atlantic Council. I'm convinced the alliance will remain indispensable for our future. Our member countries hold high the values of freedom, democracy, and human rights. These principles will need continual defense against those who would try to take or suppress them. That's why our NATO military forces will undertake an ambitious program of exercises and training to maintain our capability to work together as a cohesive, cohesive team. This will remain our focus as we prepare together for the security challenges of our future. 